بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأول الأمر منكم صدق الله العلي العظيم We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this year the year of the reappearance of our beloved Imam, Imam al-Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala farajo sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we beg him to make us amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. We congratulate our beloved Imam Imam al-Mahdi ajallallahu ta'ala faraju sharif on this auspicious occasion, the birth anniversary of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best idea and that will be to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi ajallallahu ta'ala faraju sharif. When we look at the life of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam, we can learn many lessons that can prepare us for the appearance and the reappearance of our Imam. And also it can teach us what's our rights and responsibility to the Imam of our time. It's within the narrations of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba that we see the lines that will enlighten our life for the preparation in order to receive the Imam of our time. And also, if we, God forbid, didn't get a chance to live during his re reappearance, we have responsibility in his occultation. After Imam had to sign the treaty with Muawiyah and he was forced to do so. He didn't want to sign a treaty with Muawiyah. He was forced to do so due to the lack of companions and Ansar and those people who will defend him. He didn't have enough people to stand against Muawiyah. He prepared army three to four times and he sent toward fighting Muawiyah. But unfortunately with propaganda, with acquisition, with money and bribing, they, Muawiyah, bought every single leader of that army, of those armies, and Imam Hassan alayhi salam was left alone within his tent that even they attacked his tent and while he was praying they pulled the prayer mat from beneath his feet so he was alone he didn't have anybody to fight alongside Muawiyah comes and he the way he portrayed this treaty that Imam Hassan wanted to sign this treaty with me it was from his side that he suggested this treaty and I accepted it. This was Muawiyah's presenting this treaty, that it wasn't me, it was Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Imam, through this beautiful hadith, says, Qam al Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam al al manbar. Imam gets on top of the podium. Please pay attention. Hayna ishtama'a ma'a Muawiyah, fahamid Allah wa athna alayhi. He started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma qal ayyuha al nas. O oh, people, he's addressing all those people. 
إن معاوية زعم أني رأيته للخلافة أهلا ولم أرى نفسي لها أهلا معاوية thinks that I saw him to be worthy of the Khilafah and I'm not worthy of the Khilafah this is what Muawiyah thinks that I thought he would be good and suitable for Khilafah and I, Hassan al-Mushtawa, am not وكذبة. this is complete lie أنا أولى الناس بالناس I have the most authority I am superior than everyone else to lead this nation في كتاب الله within the Holy Quran وعلى لسان نبي الله on the tongue of Rasulullah he has said that I supposed to be the Khalifa فأقسم بالله here is the point of my discussion فأقسم بالله he swears to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Ahl al-Bayt they swear they want to show the importance of what is about to come after it they don't lie they don't need to swear because people trust Ahl al-Bayt typically they don't have to prove themselves when they swear they want to show the density of what is about to come فَأُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ لَوْ أَنَّ النَّاسِ بَايَعُونِي if people would have pledged allegiance with me وَأَطَاعُونِي and they would have obeyed me وَنَصَرُونِي and they would have aided me لَأَعْطَتْهُمُ السَّمَاءُ قَطَرَهَا Allah, uh, the sky, the heaven would have sent its all blessing وَالْأَرْضُ بَرَكَتَهَا and the earth would have given all of its blessing to them if they would have done these three things number one they would have pledged an allegiance with me bayauni bay'a ata'uni obedience and nasaruni aiding me and supporting me so when we read the history and we get to this segment and we hear the pain of imam hassan al-mushtaba alayhi salam throughout these lines how much painful it was for him to see that he has the leadership, it's divinely God-given leadership of Ummah in his hand that he has to guide people to the right path for them to attain salvation in dunya and akhirah and he knows how Muawiyah will distract, deviate and astray all of the people to hellfire by no means Muawiyah is suitable to be in this position so it's very difficult and very painful for Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam to see this scenario. He comes and he says, well, because of these three reasons, I, will, I was forced to sign the treaty. And unfortunately, many of us, we have, not we have not read the elements of the treaties, the, tre the treaty that was signed between Muawiyah and Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam which Muawiyah didn't, didn't follow and was not committed to any of those elements of the treaty that was signed between him and Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. One of them was that Muawiyah needs to stop cursing Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam because for, for, for 80 years, Muawiyah, all of his, on all of his pulpit, he commanded all of his speakers to curse Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He's supposed to stop it. He didn't. After you, you should not appoint anyone to be the Khalifa after you. It should come back to Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba. He did assign Yazid and he appointed Yazid, his son, as a Khalifa. And more other elements. Bayauni, Pledge of Allegiance. What is Bay'a? Physically, when you give hand to hand of the Imam, and you do bay'ah with him, you, play, you pledge an allegiance with the Imam. By bay'ah, it means that I have surrendered surrender myself, my will, everything to the hand of you, O Imam. Whatever you say, whatever you command, I am at your disposal. Whatever you want, I will do it. I have no will from myself anymore. Go there, I'll go there. Come here, I'll come here. Your shift needs to be at the end of this road. Okay, 
You need to stay all night long. Okay. In the morning, I need you to go there. Okay. Everything becomes by the command of the Imam. No more my own will. It's in the middle. No more. It's all the will of the Imam. This is called bay'ah. Whatever he prescribes for me as a task, as a to-do list during the day, I accept and I do it. This is called bay'ah. Number one, ata'ah, obedience. Chapter 4, verse 59. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority from among you. We've been commanded to obey Allah, obey Rasulullah, and those in authority from among us. Who is that person that is amongst us today that we must obey? During the time of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba, he was the one who had authority given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did, he pay it, did people pay attention to Imam? No. Did they pledge allegiance with him? No. Did they obey him? No. Did they aid Imam? They didn't. Because Imam says, if people would have pledged allegiance with me, if they would have obeyed me, and if they would have aided me, the heaven and the earth would have given all its blessings and beauty and barakat and rizq and to them. They didn't. They left Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. We curse those people. Why? Because they did not pledge an allegiance with Imam with their hand, with their tongue, with their heart, and with their action. They did not. They didn't obey the Imam of their time with their action, with their tongue, with their heart, and physically and mentally. They didn't obey. And they didn't aid the Imam of their time. Again, Allah is commanding us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul Obey Allah and obey Rasul Allah and those in authority among you. We've been commanded. And Allah doesn't leave it like that. Chapter 29, verse 2. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ do the people suppose that they will be left off because they say, we have faith and they will not be tested? All of us faith faithful, yes? Yes. yes? All of us faithful, yes? yes. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, people, some, alhamdulillah, I mean, some people don't say inshallah strongly because their faith and iman, I mean, I won't be able to say inshallah because my faith still needs more work to be done. Okay, I don't want that strong inshallah. But inshallah, we will have a higher faith tomorrow than today. Inshallah. Allah says, you think you will be left alone just to say, I'm faithful. You won't be tested. All of us, we will be tested. People at the time of Imam Hassan and Mushtaba alayhi salam were tested. Everyone left and no one was there with Imam Hassan and Mushtaba alayhi salam. Maybe handful of people. At the time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, people were tested. At the time of Imam Ali alayhi salam, people were tested. Imam Ali alayhi salam didn't have 40 people next to him to go and take his right back. He didn't have 40 people. Because Rasulullah commanded him, if you have 40 people, go ahead and fight and get your khilafah back. He didn't have. Imam Hassan didn't have. Imam Hussein only had 72, 84, let's round it up to 100 people. That's only amount of people defended Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. He didn't have. They were all faithful, yes. Who they were tested? Every era, people are tested by the Imam of their time. We read in Ziyara al Jama al Kabira. وَالْبَابُ الْمُبْتَلَى بِهِ النَّاسِ The door and the gate that every mankind will be tested by their Ahl al-Bayt During the time of Imam Hussein, Imam Sajjad, Imam Baqir, Imam Sadiq, Imam Kazim, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, Imam Rida, Imam Jawad, Imam Hadi, Imam Hassan al-Askari, they didn't have people who did these three things by only pledge of allegiance. 
Ata'uni, showing obedience. And Nasaruni, and aided me. None of the Imams had it. May Allah curse all those people who didn't stand by the word of Allah and Rasulullah and those among them who have authority. How about you and I, brothers and sisters? Have we obeyed Allah? Have we obeyed Rasulullah? Have we obeyed those people in authority among us? Who is that person today that he's amongst us and we have not done these three things? Pledge of allegiance, showing obedience, and aiding is the Imam of our time, Imam al-Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, salawat by his name. Even with your salawat, you don't aid the Imam the way you're supposed to do. Let's have loud salawat. Have I pledged an allegiance with the Imam of my time? Have I done it? Have I pledged allegiance? Well, Imam, physically, Shaykh, I haven't seen the Imam physically. How can I pledge allegiance with him physically? Number one, there is a ziyarah that is prescribed to read after Salat al-Subh every day. After Salat al-Subh, this ziyarah very much recommended. The ziyarah of the Imam of our time, ziyarah Imam al-Zaman, ajrallah ta'ala, farjah sharif, every day after Salat al-Subh. We read in this ziyarah, Allahumma inni, oh, at the end of it, Allahumma, we read, we say salam to him, and we say, we give bay'ah to him, and then we say at the end, Allahumma hadhi bay'atun lahu fi unuqi ila yawm al-qiyamah. Oh Allah, this is within this ziyarah i'm pledging allegiance with the imam it's on my neck this pledge of allegiance until the day of qiyamah and the ziyarah has been prescribed within many of our book of hadith in bahar and anwar it says wajadtu fi ba'd al-kutub al-qadima ba'd dhalik wa yasfaqu bi yadihi al-yumna 'ala al-yusra when you read the ziyarah after salat al-subh at least the bare minimum we can do Allahumma hadhi bay'atun lahu fi anuqi. Allah, this is a pledge of allegiance with my Imam on my neck, this pledge of allegiance until the day of judgment. That's the bare minimum we can start doing. All the applications you can see, ziyarah of Imam al-Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala faraj al-Sharif after Salat al-Subh. That becomes the action plan we learn tonight. Imam Hassan alayhi salam brings us today to celebrate his birth anniversary. Kareem Ahl al-Bayt, the generous of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. We want from his generosity. We say, Imam, we came and we learned from your life that we need to be pledging allegiance to the Imam of our time. Pledge of allegiance physically. Pledge of allegiance with my own action and my heart and my tongue that I am the soldier of Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj Sharif. Whatever he wants from me, I will do it. Number one, pledge of allegiance. Number two, Wa'ata'uni. Have I obeyed the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj Sharif? Shaykh, I don't know what Imam wants from me. I haven't been able to see him. I haven't been able to communicate with him. How can I know that those people, they saw Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam, and all the Imams, they saw them. We didn't get to see the Imam of our time. Well, Imam al-Zaman wants us to do what all the other Imams want the, their people to do. Imam Zaman, when he reappears, he brings the same teachings of Rasulullah, he will bring the same teachings of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He will bring the same teachings of Imam Hassan. All the other Imams, Imam Zaman will bring their teachings, the same copy-paste. He won't bring anything new for you and I, brothers and sisters. Nothing new. The teachings of Islam, if we follow it, and we follow Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Quran, we have obeyed the Imam of our time. Obeying them in our ahkam, in our jurisprudence. Obeying them in our aqa'id and belief. Obeying them in our morality and akhlaq. In these three phases, these three categories, we must obey Allah, Rasulullah, 
and those among us who they have authority, which is the Imam of our time. Imam Mahdi will lead us to Imam, Imam Mahdi will lead us to Rasulullah and Rasulullah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another dua that we are really recommended from Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad and al-Sadiq alayhi salam, which is the dua al-Ahd, where Imam says, Man da'a ilallah ta'ala arba'ina sabahan. Anyone who recites this dua 40 days in the morning, after Salat al-Subh, He will be from the companions of our Imam. If we die before the reappearance of the Imam, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, if the reappearance of the Imam didn't happen in our life, which insha'Allah it will happen in our lifetime. Uh, insha'Allah it will happen. Insha'Allah it will happen. If we die before his reappearance, Allah Ta'ala min qabrih, Allah will bring him back alive from his grave. وَأَعْطَاهُ بِكُلِّ كَلِمَةٍ أَلْفَ حَسَنَةٍ Allah will give him 1,000 hasana and reward for every word of this dua that he read. وَمَحَا عَنْهُ أَلْفَ سَيِّئَةٍ And Allah will remove and cleanse from him 1,000 evil and sin. By reading this dua, which it won't take us more than 5 minutes. Not even 5 minutes. Short dua. After, when we wake up in the morning, Salat al-Subh, we read it. 40 days. And if we do it continuously, we can do it. It's very small and short dua. In it, what do we say? All the way to the end of it. Allahumma inni ujaddud lahu fi sabihati yawmi hadha wa ma ishtu min ayyami ahdan wa aqdan wa bay'ah. Oh Allah, I update, I renew it to him in the beginning of this day and throughout the days of lifetime, a pledge, a covenant, and allegiance. Bay'ah. Every day we say this. I don't see the Imam, but I can read the dua. Every day, every day, every day, I read it 40 days. That gives me what? Gives me focus. Makes me to think of the Imam every day. I started, because I pledged an allegiance with, the, my, with my master. Will I be doing anything anymore evil in my day-to-day -day activities? No, I pledged allegiance with the Imam that I supposed to obey him. Haram comes, I lower my gaze. Haram comes, I turn it off. Haram comes, I become samit, samt, silence. Haram comes, I cover. Obedience, salah on time. My master wants me on time here right now. Salah, I leave everything. Salah on time. My aqidah, I will read about it. My morality, I will read about it. I will ask questions. An allegiance to which I commit myself and from which I neither convert nor change. Oh Allah, please, it's a beautiful dua. Please, brothers and sisters, try to commit to start reading it. Allahumma ja'alni min ansarih. Imam Hassan say they didn't nasr. If they would have nasaruni, aided me, we say, oh Allah, make me among those who are aiding him. Min ansarih. وَعْوَانَهِ Supporting him. وَالذَّابِينَ عَانَهِ وَالْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَيْهِ فِي قَضَاءِ حَوَائِجِهِ وَالْمُحَامِينَ عَانَهِ وَالسَّابِقِينَ إِلَىٰ إِرَادَتِهِ Oh Allah, make me of his supporters, sponsors, defenders, and those who hurry in carrying out his instructions. Every day I wake up in the morning, I want to be rushing toward carrying out the instruction of my Imam. What Imam wants from you and I? To just go with our daily life, not think about religion, not thinking about Islam, not thinking about Allah and Ahl bayt and Quran, not thinking about anything. Just work, 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 work. This is it. And some hobbies for some people. Oh Allah, make me to carry out to, who hurry in carrying out his instructions, those who comply with his orders, those who uplo up uphold him, those who precede others to implementing his will. 
وَالسَّابِقِينَ إِلَىٰ إِرَادَتِهِ We compete with one another. Who will be there to implement the will of the Imam of our time? Sabqa, competition. Competition in materialistic life, mashaAllah, every one of us, the fastest that we can go, we are competing with one another when it comes to the materialistic life. But am I doing the same thing when it comes to the religion? What Imam wants from me, so let me do it faster than the other one. I want to compete. I want his satisfaction. I want to get more of this Imam. This gives us, see this dua, how it gives us guideline. How it shapes our lifestyle every day. The more I read dua, dua, dua. Very important, brothers and sisters. This Ramadan needs to be a wake-up call for all of us. To get back to the Imam of our time. To see what is his command. Read about him. There are books. I remember Ramadan three, four years, five, six years ago. I gave a lecture 30 nights about Imam al-Mahdi. It's all online. Every night of those three ni or 30 nights, I emphasized on three books that we can start reading. Right away, the first book is Makyar al makarim Beautiful book. Very important to read. The translation is available. The PDF is there. No one has excuse. I mentioned this in my 15th of Sha'ban lecture. I will repeat it. I will repeat it. I will repeat it until we all read it. And then going to Kamal Ikmal al-Din wa Atmam al-Na'mah, Shaykh al-Saduq, Ghaybal al-Nu'mani, Muntakhab al-Athar, Layt bin Ayatullah, Safi. These books are available to read. It requires only 15 minutes of our time every day. How many minutes? 15. How many minutes? 15. How many minutes? 15. Only 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes a day. That's enough. We will be able to finish an 800 pages book if we just read 15 minutes a day. It's possible. You see it, 800 pages, 15 minutes. Reading, listening, alhamdulillah, by now there are hundreds of lectures online about Imam of our time. What he really wants from me, right now he's in occultation, but I have no responsibility, no duties, nothing I can do, or I'm just going to sit and wait. It's like when we have darkness here, we're all just going to wait until we get some electricity. God forbid right now with tornado, suddenly, for example, this, the light goes off. Okay, everybody sits in darkness, let's just don't do anything until... Dominion does something for us. No, we all will get up and we will all turn on our flashlight. Okay, let's see. We will do something. Bring a candle out. Something. We're not just going to sit and wait for Dominion to connect our electricity. We will do something about it. That's our responsibility to the Imam of our time. Reading, dua, pledge of allegiance. In another dua, we read, وَنُصْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My aid, my support is prepared for you. It's ready for you. In the ziyara, we read, وَنُصْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My aid is ready for you. Am I ready for the Imam if he comes tomorrow? Seriously, let me ask this question for myself. All of us, let us ask ourselves. Those people during the time of Imam Hassan and Mushtaba alayhi salam, they were not ready. That's why they were, they were bought and bribed and they sold the Imam of their time with some money, some dirham, dinar, gold. They sold the Imam of their time. They left. 30,000 people came to kill Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Some of them for a for hands full of wheat flour only this much couple of dirham they came to kill the imam of their time Imam Hussain alayhi salam how much i'm selling my religion for how much i'm selling my imam for how much my imam my deen allah quran ahl bayt how much they are worth in my life how much let us give us ourselves a price Deen, every aspect of it. 
my hijab due to my cousin telling me what's up with this hijab that's how much my hijab worth i remove the hijab that's it you see how much how expensive is hijab to this person couple of people talking oh it's 21st century don't worry about it just just live allah wants you your pure heart this is what allah wants from you your heart is pure alhamdulillah this is all sheikh made stuff that's it couple of people gave us a couple of words it's done uncle of uh, cousin of imam hassan al mushtaba alayhi salam he was the leader of the army that he sent muawiyah spread propaganda and rumors that imam hassan has signed a treaty with me if you join me right now and you leave your army i will pay you one million dinar gold five hundred thousand now five hundred thousand when you join me with couple of words and one million dinar cousin of the imam he left the imam he leaves the imam Imam Zaman, come. Imam Zaman, come. We are ready. We are here to defend you. But uh, when it comes to practicing deen, I have difficulties. We finish with one more beautiful hadith by Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Before that, it's my aid ready for the Imam physically, mentally spiritually am i ready for imam zaman or when imam zaman comes tomorrow and he tells me mustafa you are not ready your akhlaq and your morality is not the one that should be in my army you don't your money your wealth is not pure you have not homes is not pure money how can you join me with that your religiosity your salah your ta'a of Allah and obedience to Allah, it's not what I'm supposed to have in my army. You're not ready. I read, I read, وَنُسْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ I'm ready, but I'm not ready. Those who go to show the bodybuildings they do, they show six-pack and muscles, and they take a figure, and they take picture, and I was just informed that some of these people make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars just to come stand in front of people and take picture. In order for them to come and take one minute picture and show their muscles and all of these figures, they have worked many, many, many years to get to this place. They just didn't wake up in the morning and say, okay, let me just come. Here you go. I'm ready. No. They spent time. They burned those muscles. They went to gym hours and hours and hours. They looked after their calories. They looked after their proteins and they did shakes and so many things in order to just come stand there for a couple of minutes, take a couple of pictures and receive 30, 40, 50,000 dollar reward. And the one who has more muscles gets more money. This is called وَنُسْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My aid, my assistant to you is prepared. I as a father, I as a mother, I as a community member, I as a businessman, I as a doctor, I as an engineer, I as a normal person, we all have responsibility to the Imam of our time. وَنُسْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My aid is prepared for you. How? In his action plan. How? I need to write. We've been talking about this principles of success from the teachings of Quran and Ahl Bayt for past 15 nights. You can go through those lectures, set a goal. I want to prepare myself for Imam al-Mahdi, the best goal ever you can have. How can I, and each one of us, we are differently. My way of preparation is different than your way of preparation. Each one of us differently. Some with their wealth, some with their tongue, some with their hand, some with their research, some with their abilities, some with their presence. They can be helping. I finish with this one hadith. Ra'aytul Hasan ibn Ali, Imam says, a person who goes to masjid and he has ikhtilaf to masjid. He goes back and forth to masjid, back and forth. He gets many rewards, many things. One of them, ayah muhkamah, a definitive and firm sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Masajid, 
every masjid on the day of Qiyamah, this is hadith I'm reading you, every masjid on the day of Qiyamah will become like a person and he will say the people who were within my vicinity, they didn't take advantage of me. Masjid will become like a person. So if you have within your vicinity Islamic center and masjid, Imam says if you have ikhtilaf, meaning you go back and forth, back and forth to masjid, you will get a definitive sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a word of guidance. These lectures is guidance for myself first and last. We owe it to Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba. So what do we learn and we conclude? We will conclude that I learned from the time of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba and what he went through that I need to do bay'ah with the Imam of my time. I, to need, I need to prepare my aid for the Imam of my time and I need to obey the Imam of my time. This is the responsibility that we get and learn from the life of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam toward the Imam of our time, Imam al-Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala faraju sharif salawat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li wadiyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala aba'ih. Fi hadhi al-sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha. Wa qaidan wa nasara. Wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa'a. وتمتعه فيها طويلة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوات